insider and what it means to be an outsider. And seeing how Jesus responds. We're going to do processional communion today, so you are always welcome to grab communion and take it in your seats, but otherwise you will be ushered forward for communion. Kids, you can always play instruments on the last hymn. In two weeks, it, it feels weird to say that Labor Day is two weeks away. But it is. Two weeks from today, we are going to be out at the Scott House for worship. Um, that will be at 10 o'clock, so just a touch later, with our Presbyterian friends. And after worship, we're going to have lunch from Holy Smokes Barbecue, which sounds ever so exciting. So I hope you can join us for that. Keep in mind that our little food shelf is empty and needing to be refilled every day. So whatever you pick up um, at the grocery store, um, some macaroni and cheese, peanut butter, anything that's easy and ready to eat goes really, really well. Um, keep in mind that this week, again, here we are at the end of summer, is the last Ice Cream Wednesday. It has been going phenomenally well, uh, but your last chance is this Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, hope you can come and join us. Um, Vicki tells me that the apples are ripening faster, um, partly because of the heat and the dryness. So if you are looking for apples, you could go chuck our trees. And you're welcome to pick what you want. She says the crab apples are ripe this week, um, and the state fair are just about ripe, so in the next few days. Um, for prayers, would you keep in your prayers, of course, the people of Maui after the devastating wildfires, but also now the people of California under threat from a hurricane. Um, it's been downgraded out here to a tropical storm, but still looks to be catastrophic. So we will be keeping them in our prayers. Also, Alice Holm, who continues to be hospitalized uh, this week. I think those are the things I need to say. Kathy. exciting time for us. We have other churches who are working with us, and uh, so I need a couple things from you. One, uh, if you'd like to donate, I made a list, and it's out there on the table by the sign-up sheets, and if you can see, the red things are the things that we need the most of. Also, if you don't want to donate uh, items, you can give us some cash, and we will shop for you. Um, for those that don't have shirts, next week the shirts will be out there. We have every size if you can't find yours, if you've worn yours out, um, if you grew a little bit, um, we have shirts for you, and they are free. And then I want to encourage all of you to sign up for the project uh, out by the 10th of September so that we can assign them the next week. And also, if you know someone, or you yourself need some yard work or an outdoor project, we also need that by the 10th, so we can assign people that. And then, the exciting thing is that this is the 10th anniversary of God's Work Our Hands, and so we are having our lunch out at Dunlap Park, and it's going to be served from 12 to 2.30. It's free, and uh, it's done by Rue at the Table. They're doing tacos and nachos. And while I'm up here, I just want to remind everyone that the 10th, September 10th, will be our first uh, time of Second Sunday surprise. And all of you are invited. It's intergenerational. We're going to do, we do a little lesson, we do a fun craft, and then of course we have lunch. So please plan this year to join us. Great, thank you so much. Will you stand as you are able? 
for the confession and forgiveness found in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. <coughs> Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. Sin. We, we have hurt our communities. We have squandered your blessings. We have poured in your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing together the Kyrie in the front of the hymnal on page 184. Well, good morning. Thank you. 
teeth. <laughs> that made me feel really bad. I can't help that I got a lot of teeth. All giggles got teeth. It's like, it's like she decides what I'm going to be just because of how I walk. I don't like it. I'm, I'm really sad. Oh, I'm really sad. Well, Peter, I'm sorry. Yeah, man, man. She can just go and live someplace else. I maybe don't want to be her friend anymore. Oh, Peter, I'm really sorry about that. It's hard when people decide what we're like just by how we look. Yeah, like, I can't help my teeth. I, I, I know that. You're just, you just look like a gator, and gators always look like that. Yeah. And here's the deal. I can't, I can't fix this for you, but I can tell you a couple of things. I can tell you that Opal being afraid, that's on Opal. That's not you. You didn't do anything wrong. I didn't. No, you didn't do anything wrong. When, when we're afraid, that's, the fear is ours to take care of. It's not up to you to take care of all those fears. I don't want her to be afraid of me. Yeah, I know. But she's got to deal with this herself. She's got to figure out that teeth shouldn't be a reason for her to be afraid of you. I'm her friend! Well, yes, I know that. You could remind her of that. You could remind her that you're her friend. Well, yeah, I can do that. And then you maybe have to just wait and wait for her to get over being afraid. And maybe she'll say that she can come and live with you now, but you just need to let her take care of her own fear. Oh, I don't like it. No, I know. It's hard when we, when we decide what people are like just by what they look like. But it's going to be okay. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get through this together. But it's okay also for you to feel hurt about that. Yeah, I do feel hurt. Do you think you can do the prayer today? No, I'm too sad. Okay, well maybe I can do the prayer now. So let's hold hands. And close our eyes. And we always take a nice deep breath. God, it's sad when people decide what we're like just because of how we look. Help us to see deeper. Help us to see into what's inside people. Like you do. Give us your eyes to see that we are all your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, what? Yeah, I think she was afraid I'm gonna get her. But she's my friend, I wouldn't do that. Oh. Thanks anyway. I'm glad you guys came up to be with me when I'm sad. Good morning. Our reading today is from Isaiah chapter fifty six, verses one and six through eight. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, 
I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 67. I will read the odd verses, if you will please join me responsibly in the um, even verses which are both printed in your bulletins. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has come forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The word of the Lord. Will you stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel? Friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Maker and from Jesus the Savior.
On the one side, we have a single, older, foreign woman. And on the other side, we have a large group of young male citizens. It's a timeless scenario, whether it's played out in Galilee 2,000 years ago, or yesterday in almost any city in our country. Insiders and outsiders. The powerful versus the powerless. The privileged versus the denigrated. This summer, Pixar released a movie called Elemental. And it's about this kind of confrontation. It's a really good movie. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's an allegory, a story about how the four elements, earth, air, fire, water, have tried to build a community together. The last they have allowed into the city is fire, who is deeply suspect and is not trusted. And then it's about how do they try to live together. And that's a little like our gospel reading for today. In it, we have this Canaanite woman who keeps yelling at the disciples. And they're trying to ignore her, hoping she'll just give up and go away and leave them alone. And even Jesus ignores her. Have mercy on me, she says. Send her away. Now, at the time of Jesus, the default prejudice of Jesus' people, of the Jewish people, was against Samaritans and Canaanites and all foreigners. And this was a prejudice that was deeply ingrained into the daily life of the Jewish people. Like Cultural racism is deeply ingrained in us, in America, in the 21st century. Ever since 400 years ago, people of European descent somehow decided that anyone who was black or brown was inherently of less value. Though we have made attempts to rid ourselves of this sin, its disease infects all of our lives. Jesus grew up with just that kind of racism. It was all around him. It was reinforced in the scriptures that were read in synagogue every week. But that racism wasn't the only word that scripture had about foreigners who lived with them, those who were considered outcasts in Israel. In the law of Moses, there were provisions made for the widow, the orphan, and the foreigners who live in the land. The prophet Isaiah, in our first reading, envisioned Israel as a light for the nations, that God's house might be a house of prayer for all peoples. In the book of Ruth, we have the story of a foreign woman who marries an Israelite. And that foreign woman, Ruth, becomes the great-grandmother of David, Israel's greatest king, and an ancestor to Jesus himself. But by Jesus' time, the far more conservative, far more racist teachings found in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah were the ones that were more often taught and reinforced and believed. Racism in Israel had become systemic. The Jewish people kept to themselves. They did not have dealings with foreigners who lived with them. And they thought they were of less 
In our gospel readings for these past few weeks, Jesus has been withdrawing to safer Gentile regions, those not ruled by Herod Antipas. Remember, a few weeks ago we had the line that said, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there. And remember that the thing that Jesus had heard about was the beheading of John the Baptist. Life had gotten dangerous for Jesus and his disciples. And yet the crowds kept following. So Jesus finally had to leave Galilee altogether and go to the districts of Tyre and Sidon. Foreign parts. But even there they had heard about Jesus. And so this woman, this Canaanite woman, comes to beg him to heal her daughter. She is desperate for the life of her child. And Jesus speaks to her with words shaped by the racism of his people. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Oh, really? And then, when she continues, when she persists in begging for the life of her child, he answers with an insult. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to dogs. Calling someone a dog 2,000 years ago is even worse than calling someone a dog now. That was an insult. Jesus speaks here as his people have taught him to speak, with all the prejudice and all the racism of a people who believed that they and they alone were chosen by God and that they were then inherently better than everybody else. And still, the Canaanite woman won't go away. She insists on her place in God's kingdom. She argues with Jesus. Yes, Lord, she says, yet even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. All she's asking for are some crumbs. Enough crumbs to heal her dying daughter. If Jesus didn't realize it before, she's now just hit him upside the head with her plea. And it's like the lights go on. Jesus understands what his mission is. And it's not just to the house of Israel. His mission, and the mission of the disciples, and the mission of the church that comes after, is not limited to one group of people. The Canaanite woman challenged him. And because Jesus is the one sent out of God's love for the whole world, Jesus and the ministry of he and the disciples is transformed. He rejects the racism of his childhood. He sees with startling clarity that his call is welcoming all into God's kingdom. When Jesus leaves the region of Tyre and Sidon, he travels through cities where there are very few Jewish people. And there he duplicates among the Gentiles the same kinds of things he did in Galilee with the Jews. He heals, he teaches, and he, even again, feeds a crowd. This time of 4,000 men plus women and children. He does the same thing with the Gentiles that he did with the Jews. So 
So the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like everyone welcome. Everyone equal. And everyone loved. And what does that mean for you and I? So I want you to think for a minute about a time when you were the outsider. A time when you were alone and uncomfortable, when you were the fish out of water. Maybe it was a time you went with your wife to her family reunion. I've been to those. They're hard when you're the outlaw. Or maybe you had to go to an emergency room in a distant town. Or maybe you went to a high school class reunion with your spouse. Maybe you were the new kid in town and you had to start a new school and a new class with a new teacher. Maybe you were trying to get supper in some faraway town, in a place where you were the outsider. There was once when I was in Chicago with my husband and we went to a barbecue place around the corner. Everybody had said it was great. And we went in and we looked at the menu and it was a takeout place and we were standing in line and all of a sudden we realized we were the only white people in that whole restaurant. That was different. Maybe you were traveling overseas and you didn't speak the language. Or maybe you went to church. Because even going to church can be a scary experience. Now, you know, maybe you've gone to church since you were a child. Or maybe not. But sometimes just stepping into a church building is terrifying. It's the scariest thing a lot of people do, and a lot of times they're so scared they don't want to go there, don't want to try it. Now, if you're a member of Zion, I hope that you think that coming here on a Sunday morning is a comfortable thing, time to be with your friends, time to connect with God more deeply, time to refuel your spiritual batteries for the week. But I gotta tell you, that is not the experience most people have of going to church. The vast majority of people in our country today think walking into a church building, any church building, is worse than, I don't know, going to the dentist. Worse than going to your husband's family reunion. Because, you know, at least when you go to the family reunion, nobody expects you to know anything or know anybody. But when you go to church, there are all sorts of rules that nobody tells you about. I think it's safe to say that we all know what it was like for this Canaanite woman. You can feel it right in the pit of your stomach. You know what that feeling was of being the outsider, way out of your depths, way out of your neighborhood, and way, way out of line. She is the country mouse come to the big city. She's from the wrong side of the tracks. She's yesterday's gum stuck to everybody's shoes. Even the word that the gospel writer uses for her shouting, it's really not the word for shouting. In the Greek that the gospel was originally written in, the word that we have there is the same word you would use for the shriek of a crow. So think of it. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is possessed by a demon. It's a kind of a shriek, right? What would it take her to rant like that and to keep it up, even in the face of deep prejudice? What does it take to walk into a restaurant when you're the only person of your race there? What would it take 
to go to a school where you know nobody. Well, it's a miracle, right? It's a miracle. A miracle of persistence. And for this woman, it's a miracle of love. It's a miracle of love. Because nothing else will push us into places where we are terrified. But love. It's why people steel themselves finally to visit a church. Because they love God more than they love being afraid. It's will they're willing to take those risks just to be here. That's what will make us face down jeers and ridicule and embarrassment. This woman loved her daughter so much. She was willing to go anywhere, to do anything, to be the outsider, to even shriek like a crow on just the slimmest hope that her daughter would be healed. And to her, Jesus says, Woman, great is your faith. Nobody else in the entire gospel gets that kind of praise from Jesus. Not Peter, not John, not Mary Magdalene, nobody. Nobody is given that kind of praise. No other person in the whole gospel gets that compliment from Jesus. This woman, this Canaanite woman, this outsider, this complete nobody who doesn't even have a name, this crow who shrieks her plea, this dog who dares to beg for scraps, she is given the highest honor of all. Great is your faith. Dear friends, may you be the courageous outsider and may you be the loving insider. May you know welcome when you are the outsider. May you be the welcome when you are the insider. And may you always hear Jesus' voice saying to you, Well done, my good and generous servant. Great is your faith. We sing together hymn number 581, You Are Mine.
confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. O oh God, your spirit gathers the church. Shepherd those who are newly baptized and newly ordained in the proclamation of the gospel. Breathe, breathe life into ecumenical and interreligious endeavors. Support the ministries throughout the globe and enliven all your people to share your good news. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You created the earth and all its inhabitants and declared it good. Clean, polluted skies, seas, and soil. Provide nourishment to plants and animals. Make us aware of our impact on the environment. Lead all who support those who have been impacted by extreme weather. We pray today especially for the people of Maui. And we pray for the people of California. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You call leaders to bridge differences and practice generosity. Inspire all in authority to protect people in harm's way. Deliver those in bondage. Support fair elections. Provide care for military personnel and veterans. And show mercy to those whom they have responsibility for those for whom they have responsibility. Hear us, O oh God. Provide for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Embrace people who have been rejected because of differences. Heal trauma caused by racism or prejudice. Shield any who are persecuted. Console those who are dying. Heal those who are sick. We pray today especially for Alice and for Chuck, for Gary and for Tony, for Tom and for Kathy, and all those on our prayer list those we now name in the quiet of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Give us mercy and strength. O God, you journey with us in all of life's transition. Guide those preparing for baptism, marriage, or retirement. Guide our church council and committee on visioning and ministry. We pray especially for our call committee and the work they are doing. Safeguard those who travel. Hear us, O oh God. Hear your mercy, Spirit. We give you thanks for those who now rest from their labors. Especially today, we remember Bernard and Claire Ball. Motivate us by their lives of dedication to the gospel until that day, day when we join with them in our eternal home. Hear us, O oh God. Hear your mercy, Spirit. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Will you stand as you are able? The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. They share with one another greeting of peace.
sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up our heart. Give it thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, who our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Thank you. 